Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here, and this is part seven of uh, building products with JavaScript, the course where we build the Electron app specifically. And today I want to talk about WebSockets and building the chat within our app. So this is actually going to be the last functional bit. So we finished all the functionality that I outlined in the very beginning and all the parts after that we'll talk about electron specific stuff like testing, packaging, updating and deploying or serving to users, I guess, in this case. So uh, let's talk about WebSockets. So what are WebSockets? Well, it's a communication protocol, obviously, that works over TCP and is a full duplex, uh, or rather gives a full duplex communication channels, right? It still uses HTTP to do the handshakes, but uh, provides a way better way to um, create a real time communication platforms, right? So this is a very nice example of how it actually works. So the client sends an HTTP request or HTTP handshake that says, hey, I want a WebSocket connection. And if server agrees, it will upgrade it and create a bidirectional persistent connection that both client and server can send messages over until one of them terminates it. Uh, what bidirectional means in this case is that again, both client and server can send messages and uh, why exactly this is good for uh, like things like chat and pretty much any real time things is that uh, normally in chat you want to actually have uh, immediate feedback to users or whenever the you know other users send messages you want to see them immediately and obviously this is not only true for chat but as well like real time dashboards or whatever and of course you can always implement it with rest but that would mean that your clients which is nicely depicted here would need to go around and ask server uh, like every x second or you know in case of chat you want it near real time so every second millisecond hundred sec hundred milliseconds so very fast ask a server, is there anything new? Is there anything new? And if you have enough clients, this is basically turns into denial of service attack on your server. So you don't really want to do that. Way better um, approach is to use WebSockets and allow server to push the messages to you. So this is exactly what we did uh, over the live streams, obviously in a very simplified version, but uh, hopefully I will give you some insights into how that works and you know how you can use it in your project. So let's have a look at the source code. Uh, first of all, we have a very simple uh, WebSocket server here. So I used Express.js and Express uh, VS package, which allows you to simply uh, set up the WebSocket server based on the Express routes. You can do that manually, but it's a bit of a pain to do the to handle the routing yourself. So you know, I just used the wrapper. Essentially, it does the same that you would do with a normal WebSocket. So. Here's our handler. Whenever the connection is established, you will get this uh, client WebSocket parameter plus request. Request contains the parameters, in this case, series and episode. So we're gonna have chats that are grouped by the specific episode that the client is watching. So uh, next I create a client ID because uh, sockets are not unique in case, you know, you, you, there's no way to identify them by uh, without assigning ID. So we create the V1 ID, which is time-based random ID. And uh, then, so what you would normally do, you would have a database that stores all the messages and you know sessions and whatever. But in this case, since it's like a very prototypey, let's call it this um, uh, way of building it, I just created an object that just stores all the messages and clients, right? So. Uh, what I do here is whenever the new connection is created, I check if this session is already exists. If not, then I create it. So as you can see, the session contains clients and messages. And then I just use this session to store both the client and messages and push them around for other clients. Again, this is just a way of prototyping. So this is not something you would do in production unless you want a chat that you know disappears anytime you restart the um, machine or loses messages, which is normally not something you want, but you know, all right. But yeah, so this is just in memory store. Let's think about it this way. Uh, so then I assign this ID to the client so that I can find it later on and I push it into clients array. Uh, then I listen to them for the messages from the client. So once the message comes, I push it to the messages array and I send it to all the clients who are already connected, including the same client, because on the client side, I don't care about this. I just send the message and forget about it. But since I get it back, I can just render it almost immediately and I can see it at the same time that other people see. On close, I remove the client. This is exactly why I needed this ID. So I remove it from client's array. And uh, 
if there are zero clients, I clean up the chat. So because, you know, in this case, it's like we need some way to clean up the memory because not cleaning it up will expand this object to infinite sizes and crash the Node.js and we don't really want that. So I'm just, you know, cleaning it up. Okay, and uh, then what happens is whenever the client connects, so it, it set up this listeners and it takes the session and if basically if there are any messages, if it's empty then nothing will happen, but if there are any messages, the client gets all of them back. So they will, he will essentially see the full uh, history, right? That's it. Server is super simple. Uh, once again, um, Express VS is a very convenient package, uh, very nice uh, working. It doesn't mean you have to use it. I mean, basically, the only difference from like setting up the WebSockets yourself is the fact that you can actually use those routes in a convenient manner with Express Router, you know. Uh, there is a VS package, which is just a WebSocket. It's really fast, it's very easy to use. And, uh, you know, if you don't want roots or anything, if you want to like configure it yourself and you don't need express ties, this is really all you need to set up the server. You know, it's very, very simple. But again, I did this because we want this series and episodes and, you know, express GS easiest way to set it up. So next, uh, client side, so, or in app. Yeah. So first of all, I added the chat into the episode view so I can actually, I guess, show you yarn start this one. Uh, so once we open some episode, you will see it uh, on the right side. So let's go for Berserk, I guess. And uh, you can see here, it's just connecting. So once we get the, ah, right, you want, I'm, I'm, I'm being silly, of course. Uh, so we need to launch the server. Uh, no, no, wait a second, CD, let me see chat server, node index, there we go. And uh, then we start the, oh, come on start the app so now we have the server running now we have the app uh, and now it should work so basically once it gets the uh, series information and once it gets the episode it will connect uh, then in this case you know again we don't have any database we don't have any way to identify users so what i do is i'll allow a user to uh, pick a name so i'll say tim uh, hit enter and then we can send messages right so as you can see here, we have the message from Tim, hello world, and here we have the clients list. And uh, if I actually go here and start a second app, um, but to make it unique, I need to change the name. So let's call it test. And then I do yarn start. So we will have two apps running side by side. Um, we can close this. There's our first app. So there we go. I'm going to move it here just to demonstrate you, you know, the, the, the chat actually works. Uh, in case you are not sure about that. Okay, there we go. So uh, as you can see, we already got the message from there. So test uh, and I'm gonna send hello here. And as you can see, you know, it's it works nicely. It's all displayed immediately, works. And we can perfectly see the both uh, chat messages for both clients in near instantly. I mean, you know, it's, it's obviously it's localhost, so it doesn't take too long to execute that. So uh, yeah, so this is where we included it. Chat is just a component in this case. Um, that works in a very simple way. So it gets episode and the properties because it needs to get the episode and uh, serious ID for this uh, URL construction. And once uh, it receives the new props, it basically uh, creates this WebSocket connection to, okay, right now it's localhost uh, 3000, which is should be actually configurable, something we're gonna do once we've got to the deployment part. And then it takes the episode ID, which is exactly the URL with series and the episode ID and connects uh, connects to the WebSocket. So in this case, I also uh, on open set the state to connected because once we connect it, I actually wanna render chat, right? Uh, and then we listen for messages and we just push them to state. That's all we do. So that's, and okay, sorting as well. So we sort them by date. This is like the stupidest possible thing ever. Right, sending messages is also pretty trivial. We got the inputs, we take the message. If message is longer than two symbols, we um, store it and send it to socket. One thing worth noting, sockets accept only text data or string data. So when you, if you're working with uh, any complex data, like this message that contains user message and date, you want to stringify it and then once you receive it 
from the server you actually want to parse it so you know assuming this is json obviously this is the only way i know at least to send the complex data i mean you, you can also encode it binary but that's even more pain in ass so json works fine uh and that's actually it so this you know this like what 20 lines of code get you a chat server and 20 lines of code on a client 20 lines of code on a server that works pretty well and works by episode and uh if you watch episode with your friends you can actually chat with them obviously this chat is far from perfect so this is prototype it stores stuff in memory there is a lot of conceptual problems as well here so if we're talking about people watching the same thing we actually don't want to uh, allow them to chat over the duration of all episode right because people might just throw in spoilers because they watched it longer than others so ideally you want people to watch stuff like on Twitch, for example, right? Whenever they watch it on the same timestamp, then you allow them to chat. But this is beyond this course. And if you, if you know, that sounds like a fun thing for you to implement, then go ahead and do it. This sounds like a cool uh, side project to do. But yeah, I think that's about all I wanna say about chat. It's pretty straightforward, nothing really fancy here. So um, as I said, the next, so we're done with a functional, stuff so the next stuff will be packaging updating electron app from remote whatever i, I think it's going to be like github releases or something like this probably testing so again i'm not going to go into unit testing everything because most of the stuff we have here is either super straightforward functions like you know um, this one get episode i mean you just throw in some data and then check that it works. We did that already in the previous course. If you want to look how to unit test, go watch the first course. But we do have um, our electron specific things, right? So we have this login method, which actually creates electron window. And this is, I think, the bit that would be very interesting to show how to test because it's not just your function that you know you call. It actually creates an um, electron window. It actually depends on electron things and you want to see how to test that so we're going to test those bits and those bits only and then you know if you want you can cover everything with tests uh feel free to do that um again testing web sockets is not though fancy as well so we're not going to do that um and yeah that that's pretty much it i think there's like should be not too many more videos like one or two more i guess and we're going to be done with this app basically Right, so let's wrap it up here. Um, this was WebSockets, chat works nicely. Uh, we'll be happy to answer all your comments uh, or questions if you have any. Uh, as usual, come to Discord, chat with us. We'll be happy to answer questions there and help you out with whatever you are doing uh, in JavaScript. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching and i see you next time. Bye.